Welcome to the October issue of Network on Television. I'm Jalen Smith from City Lights Engineering Division. And I'm Sharon Bennett. We're coming to you from outside the City of Seattle's Emergency Operations Center, based here at Fire Station Number 2 on 4th Avenue in the Denny Regrade. Sharon, this was the scene of intense activity in early October during the outage that occurred at 3rd and Cedar. The outage began in this vault on Cedar Street between 3rd and 4th Avenue. The fire burned for several hours, blackening cables and damaging network feeders. The fire blacked out power to 37 blocks and 1,800 customers. In the early morning hours, network crews responded to the scene. Well, right now we have, uh, we have six crews uh, out switching for the power dispatcher to clear this vault. And once it's cleared, we'll, by that time it will be cooled off enough that we'll be able to ventilate it and probably go in and see what the cause was. As always, when faced with a major crisis, city lighters began the task of repairing the damage and restoring power as quickly as possible. Work continued 24 hours a day with crews on 14 and 17 hour shifts. After many hours, crews still showed enthusiasm for the job. It's been good. Every, you know, your adrenaline gets kind of pumped up. But it's constant. We, we work hard. We really give it, give it 120 uh, percent short breaks when we get to a stopping place in the job and pretty much just keep on going, you know, for the whole 14-hour shift. This room in the Emergency Operations Center was activated for the crisis so that all city coordination for the outage came from a central place. ELC, Jay Smith. Police, fire, and other city department personnel coordinated with City Light staff to track the situation and keep the public informed 24 hours a day. Large generators were provided to bring power back to some buildings. Technical metering staff worked closely with these customers. As part of the technical meter, we do go into customers' panels, and we're familiar with the gear. That's probably why we probably picked to do the job. Uh, it's different because, you know, we're out here in, in a time of need, and uh, we feel like we're doing some uh, uh, idle and routine work. Uh, just being part of the team, I guess, is what uh, we all it's all about. As repairs progress, crews continue to work diligently with outstanding coordination. One of the remarkable things is we have had no accidents that I'm aware of. The amount of work that is being done, totally, completely accident-free. Morale is, is good and better than what I anticipated. Power is restored just before 11 a.m. Thursday morning. When the lights came back on, relieved crews continued the job of completing repairs, restoring buildings to full power, and removing generators. Things are returning to normal here by the vault where the fire took place. Investigations continue, but once again, City Light can be proud of a response in record time. Sharon, with some speed rerouting and fast action, service was restored 24 to 36 hours earlier than originally projected. That's absolutely right. Jalen, you're one of our City Light employees who volunteered to co-host MTV. It's nice to have you with me to tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, thank you, Sharon. I am in electrical engineering communication. It helps to have a cool head in this position. We recently installed a new 800 megahertz base station repeater at North Mountain. At the end of the month, we expect to have our alternate microwave path energized at Siegelson Ridge. And you're also on the Employee Survey Advisory Committee? That's true. I am one of the co-chairpersons on this committee. We're working on the plan for the survey due out in November. We're hoping for excellent survey returns. Keeping track of the employee survey goes hand in hand with measuring our corporate goals. One of the four goals is customer service. Checking customer satisfaction is an ongoing activity. Surveys take place quarterly, and this summer, more than 400 customers were asked about City Light's customer service. Seattle City Light would like to improve their customer service and would appreciate your input. Any information? Our goal is to increase the customer satisfaction rating from 82% in 1992 to 97% by 1995. Compared with last fall's survey, and perhaps because of the May 1st rate increase, overall satisfaction dropped from 82% to 75% in spring. But in the summer survey, it increased to 77.9%. Customers continue to give reliability of service the highest rating in the surveys. 
Safety is another of our corporate goals, and our safety unit now has some new staff to strengthen their efforts. Safety specialists conduct safety meetings, evaluate safety conditions at work sites, check on air quality monitoring, perform accident investigations, and coordinate worker right to know programs. Peggy Hammond joined the staff this spring, and Sean McCoy Celine is the newest safety specialist. Manager Dolores Nizick has high expectations for the group. Safety is one of the corporate goals, as you know. And I think all of the directors, the supervisors, managers, and even the employees are real glad that we're finally fully staffed and that we can actually deliver the kind of customer service that we should be doing. And I look forward to the next four or five years working with the teams that's here to try and develop the kind of program that we really need. We'll continue to keep track of our corporate goals in future NTV updates. You know, for any of us that work outside, the fall weather has been especially pleasant this year. And it made for a beautiful setting along the shores of Lake Sammamish at Vassa Park for the 1993 CLIA picnic. Employees and their families enjoyed Filipino food and festivities, including pony rides and face painting for the small ones, bingo, and even swimming in camaraderie for all. Lots of work goes into planning the picnic from CLIA president Kari Lundquist, volunteers, and the hard-working CLIA reps. And I hear the weather couldn't have been any better this year to viewing salmon up on the Skagit. That's right, Jay. You know, hydropower and fish are often referred to as enemies. But this year, there's good news to report up on the Skagit. Floating down the Skagit, we see that these pink salmon are thriving. Their runs are growing, and they're very well protected by City Lights efforts. This is the largest pink salmon stock in the state. Keith Kirko pilots our boat as we observe the fish. We're seeing in the shallow margins of the river literally hundreds of thousands of pink salmon that are selecting the right substrate, the right depth and velocity to deposit their eggs. A little bit deeper out, we're seeing the much larger Chinook salmon. They get up to 35, 40 pounds. Uh, they've dug very large nests or reds. And as we've been cruising upstream slowly, um, we're seeing these fish digging the reds, defending the reds uh, against other females coming in, and uh, they'll actually stay on that red until we get right up to them in the boat when they finally flee. The increase in the salmon run is so significant that City Light brought members of the executive team and the news media out to witness the staggering stock of spawning salmon up on the Skagit. Why has the habitat at the Skagit been so good for these pinks? And as I say, we're responsible for at least a portion of it, and that we, we do take our job as environmental stewards very seriously. Uh, we go to uh, uh, long lengths to try and protect these fish, and along with several other divisions, including ours, I think we do an excellent job, and something I think City Life can be proud of. There isn't a day during the year when the flow in the river isn't coordinated with the fish in mind, and that's, a, uh, that's significantly different than, than the way it's done in other places, and I think um, I'm, you know, proud of working for this utility with that sort of environmental concern, basically. City Light's control of the Skagit River has eliminated two of the species' enemies, flood and drought. Fish would be severely affected if there were no control of water levels and flow on the river. City Light employees put their money where their feet were on a recent Sunday morning as they joined in this year's AIDS Walk. 250 city employees joined thousands to fight AIDS. The City Light team and sponsors helped raise $1.5 million for this worthwhile effort. Raising money for good causes and helping those less fortunate comes naturally to City Lighters. And when fall is in the air, the Combined Charities campaign can't be far behind. The Combined Charities kickoff started October 1st at the Seattle Center, and events are scheduled throughout the month at all City Light locations. Make sure you're part of the action. It's something we can all be proud of. Oh, well, I guess we're ready to head back to our regular work locations. Right, and speaking of locations, we're still looking for some of your ideas about where to film NTV. I'd like to hear your story ideas, too. Give me a call at 684-3008. Well, Sharon, it was fun to have been part of this issue of NTV. From the Emergency Operations Center, I'm Jalen Smith. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. We'll see you next month. Bye.